So there's a huge problem with cancel culture that all believers should see as incongruent to our faith and completely opposite of how we should approach dealing with people and also holding people accountable. So there's a difference between canceling and holding people accountable for their actions. And I think that's very important for us as men and women of God, as believers, uh, to be out in the forefront and doing a better job in dealing with. I think if we don't handle this conversation, if we don't take lead in having healthy dialogues when it comes to dealing with people's missteps, then I think the world's going to take it. It's going to take it further and further and everybody can be just canceled for whatever. And so in this cancel culture, anything that you disagree with now has become a reason for you not to be relevant or to have any type of platform or to have a voice in any space. And we just know that that is not loving. That's completely the opposite of being loving to a neighbor. And it's not accountability and it's not holding people accountability to their words. What it's doing is it's pushing people to be more private with how they feel and their views. It's pushing people to hold in their feelings because of fear. And that isn't good because those things still continue to transpire. People still will discuss the things that you disagree with and that you will cancel them if they have a conversation about. Now, again, there is a place for accountability. There is a place for accountability of actions, accountability uh, for decisions that are made. We have freedoms, but we also have consequences for certain freedoms that we choose to exercise that are against certain laws or that may uh, cause harm. So we understand there is a balance in this conversation. But the problem with cancel culture is, especially from people who are in the churches, number one, the church plays a huge role in why cancel culture exists because believers in specifically in the American context play the role in creating cancel culture because Christian culture in this country or religious culture, I would say, which is more in the line with the Pharisees, created unnecessary laws that legislated morality and canceled certain behaviors. And that's where you run into a slippery slope, I feel, when it comes to cancel culture. I believe the church invented cancel culture in this country. And all throughout history, we see common examples of cancel culture and how it's played a role, whether it was, even though it may be well intended. So prohibition is an example. Um, political discourse surrounding video games, even all the way up to the recent trial of Kyle who we saw who got innocent, we saw that the prosecution tried to use video games as an argument um, for the type of behavior that was exempt, that was shown in uh, Kenosha, Wisconsin, where, you know, the murders took place or the killings, I'm sorry, took place, <laughs> however you want to frame it, where the killings took place that were ruled self-defense. So what I want to speak about is you see these, can this mentality of canceling oftentimes from the more Christian worldview, at least in the context of the religious right in American Christianity, where things are overly looked at from the perspective of faith. And there's this mentality to want to cancel things that disagree. Now, we all understand there are things that we should reject, several things. I have a video, which you all can check out, which talks about the three approaches that believers should take when it comes to all of these conversations. We have the one concept, which is we can accept things that are in alignment with our Christian worldview. We can reject things that are the opposite of it. And then we also have the option to redeem. There are certain things that can be redeemed. For example, you may own a cell phone. A cell phone was created uh, by somebody more than likely may not even been a believer. There are things that can be done that are evil with a cell phone, just like there are things that can be done with a gun. A gun isn't evil in and of itself, but how the gun is used is what makes it, you know, which, which can make or break it in that instance. Or a hammer. You can use a hammer to build so much that you can build with an hammer but that same hammer can be used as a weapon to strike somebody correct so it's not the it's not the object in and of itself it's not the computer it's not the internet it's not the phone all these different things but it's often the sinful intents that are taken to these different things to these different fields to these different areas so let's consider this we as believers played a huge role in cancel culture historically in this country and it's kind of run amok. And now we're on the opposite side saying, hey, you shouldn't cancel people. We have rights. We have this, this, or that. And 
What I'm here to say is why we can't continue to participate in cancel culture, but why we have to have a culture of redemption. The church should be a place full of redemption. We're redeeming people. We don't give up on people as easily as the world. The world is the one that should give up on people that should look to cancel. But we end up being reflecting more uh, like the Pharisees who we saw them constantly going out of their way to try to cancel Jesus, to cancel the disciples. Because Jesus was an official rabbi. He did all the work to become a Jewish teacher. And they were going out of their way because of his teachings and his doctrine to have him canceled. And they were trying to trip him up. They were using every method all the way until to the point of like even you know, d doing deceptive little tactics to try to get him tripped up. So the Pharisees went out of their way to have Jesus canceled. So we see that same mentality from the Pharisees. And I would argue we can go a step even further and say that this, this whole spirit that goes behind cancel culture is not in alignment with God. It's not in alignment with the spirit of God, but it's really in alignment with Satan, with Satan who is the accuser of the brethren. Satan is the accuser. Satan wants to cancel. He wants us to be canceled in the presence of God. All right? Satan wants us canceled. He wants our salvation to be canceled. He wants to prove God wrong when it comes to his creations. He wants to cancel out the working of Jesus Christ and the gospel. He wants that to be canceled out. He wants that to be canceled out on all humanity. He wants us to be canceled. Satan's been trying to cancel us from day one because he hates God and he hates everything God created, which is funny because God created angels, so he really hates himself. Whole nother conversation. But I want to talk to you all about this verse because I think this verse is important. And it is Romans 8, 33. It says, who shall bring a charge against God's elect? It is God who justifies very important verse. God is the one that justifies us. We are justified by our faith in Jesus Christ. And we know by grace are we saved through faith. And it is that faith that justifies us. And because of this justification, we become God's elect. And who shall bring a charge against God's elect? So if you are one of God's chosen, one of God's people, understand the importance of this, you being one of his elect, that God has chosen, God chose you, Therefore, if he chose you, he justified you. And if you're justified of God, the accuser, Satan, has no power over you, though he may try to accuse. What we want to do is we want our good to not be evil spoken of. So we don't want to find ourselves in these different culture wars. We don't want to be talking about, you know, these different things about the jab <laughs> or just controversies concerning politics, pro-life, pro-choice, all these different things. Sure, we can have an opinion on these things. Sure, we should be able to have a Christian worldview that informs all these different areas. And we should be very uh, strong and have a strong, be strong in these convictions that we have from the scriptures. And we should never waver in that. But we have to also understand that there's a greater war. We wrestle not against flesh and blood. We're, we're not in the business of canceling people. There are going to be people that you disagree with, even in the church. But understand, we are a church of redemption. We are a church that strives to redeem. So you have to ask yourself, as a believer, as a man or woman of God, as a follower of the way, am I seeking to redeem? Am I seeking to seek and save they that are lost? Or am I seeking to cancel out people? Am I an accuser? Many of us in the church are, have become accusers. Many of us are more focused on accusing the brethren, focused on accusing non-believers and condemning when Jesus was in a business of winning and he called us and justified us to where we shouldn't bring a charge against God's elect. And even those in the world, we don't judge them by the same standards of the world. Or I'm sorry, the word. They don't get judged by the same standards of the word because they're not believers. However, we're trying to win them over to Jesus, but we don't win them over just to be able to judge them. We win them over to redeem. We want to be men and women who redeem God's precious creation. So those are my thoughts. Let me know what you think about this. Do me a quick favor before you go. Hit that thumbs up. And if you're not subscribed to the channel, go ahead and do yourself a favor and subscribe. Tons of videos that I feel like will be edifying and a blessing to you. Hope you enjoyed this. And leave a comment and let me know your thoughts. I want my way to the top. I, I cannot fit in the middle. I, I cannot fit in the middle. I.
I cannot fit in the middle. I wear my way to the top. I 